Okay, we're back here live at EMC World. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of EMC World. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, and I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. Bill Richter is here. He's the president of EMC's Isilon division. Relatively new president. Bill, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, it's our pleasure. And, uh, you guys have been getting a lot of love from the senior management at, uh, at EMC. Tucci's been talking about you guys, David Goulden, and uh, it seems like Isilon is just this um, you know, supercharged piece of infrastructure that EMC acquired in, and is really becoming a fundamental building block of, of the company's strategy in a lot of areas. Big data, you know, even you know, the software-defined storage piece. You must be excited. Oh, we're incredibly excited. We're incredibly excited, Dave. You know, um, EMC had a very clear acquisition strategy around Isilon, and it was incredibly simple. It was, you know, there was a, there was a hole in the EMC product portfolio around scale out NAS, and on the Isilon side, and I, you know, I was part of the, of the former Isilon leadership team pre-acquisition, right. and you know, we had an absolute, undisputed, best of breed product for the scale out, scale out NAS world, but we, what we lacked is the global brand and global scale that EMC brings, and by putting those two things together, that was the strategy, and two and a half years, I could say, it's absolutely paid off in space. Yeah, I mean, like you say, you were there um, as you know, pre-acquisition. You guys went to startup, you funded the company, you went to IPO, you were doing great, and then all of a sudden there was a run on storage companies, right? And then you guys had you know, the double exit, and it was fantastic. So, uh, so what was that like? Well, it's, look, it's been, a, it's been an incredible ride. Um, you know, when I joined Isilon in 2006, I think we did around $50 million of revenue. And uh, you know, we just announced, or EMC just announced that in Q4 of last year, the combination of Isilon and Atmos together as a, as a kind of a combined product portfolio reached the billion dollar run rate. Right now that's a huge milestone for any technology company. And you know, it, it, it's been an un unbelievable experience. What, what I think it demonstrates though is that when customers see a technology that's going to add value to their business, when they see a technology that's going to improve their you know, ability to scale, their agility that's going to make their life simple, simpler, they gravitate, it, gravitate to it rapidly. So, so I'm going to ask you about the, the current state, because obviously uh, two years ago was at uh, an EMC uh, event here, and uh, Sajal was in one of the briefings, and exact, you know, influencer briefings, and I said, you know, you guys are more like big data than Greenplum. This is when they just bought Greenplum. Yeah. Because we were seeing in the field that you guys were getting these huge orders on hyperscale. Yep. So, that's when really people weren't parsing out big data being Hadoop versus kind of like yep. <laughs> large data sets. So how has it changed since then? Now, obviously you guys, saw, I saw the positioning map, map yesterday that, uh, that, Gould, um, that Goulden put up two days ago. Clarify the positioning of Isilon vis-a-vis -vis what Pivotal's doing and what the other storage is doing relative to the kind of big data or fast data, however it's being called. Sure, yeah, and, and this is pretty simple. I mean, what Pivotal's doing in Greenplum is, is much further up the stack from us. So you should think of, their initiatives are, are all around how to analyze that data, how to gleam information out of it, how to turn it into business value. Isilon's all about big data infrastructure. And you can't get to any of that stuff, stuff higher up on the stack unless you solve the infrastructure problem. So actually the way that the products are organized at this time is, is pretty complementary. Yeah, so give me, a, give me a, a taste of what you're seeing now on hyperscale outside of those kind of clients. Actually, tell us what were the main reasons why they were going to Isilon to begin with? the big consumer hype web scale companies, and then what the hyperscale and the enterprise requirement looks like and what their needs are. Yeah, sure, John. So, you know, if you go back to Isilon's original value proposition, it was very clear. We, as we look forward to the future, when we founded the company, the view was that one day the amount of unstructured data and, and file-based content would grow to such an unprecedented amount, they would just break traditional architectures, right? And that was the founding vision of the company. And our view was if you solve that problem by re-architecting a storage solution from the ground up, from a blank sheet of paper with that specific design need in mind, you'd have a big advantage in the marketplace. And that's what happened out there. You know, some of these web scale companies, some of the specific verticals that had this problem first about 10 years ago, you know, it, it happened just as we saw. You know, the, their traditional architectures were breaking, they weren't able to scale their businesses, and it was just slowing them down. So as they saw what Isilon's architecture could bring to that problem, they quickly gravitated to the solution, and, and you know, the rest is history, we had a lot of success. But something more recently has changed, okay? 
big data has spanned and fanned out across not just a few discrete vertical markets, but virtually all enterprises. Big data has now gone to the heart of enterprise IT. And at the same time, enterprise IT itself is becoming a big data problem. So what do I mean by that? General archives, home directories, file shares, these things have grown to multiple tens of petabytes for some of our customers. So traditional IT has become a big data problem and big data has become an enterprise IT problem and really those worlds have collided together and that's what our value proposition and is all about today. And fairly fast too, on an accelerated basis. I mean, only like you're talking about a handful of years. Yeah, so you have to, be, <laughs> but you have to pick your bets early, right? So we started developing our 1FS 7.0 operating system, it's codenamed Mavericks, and, and I know we're going to talk about that later um, with Nick Kirsch, our CTO. Um, but that release was all about the recognition that these worlds were colliding and we had to bring the best of breed value proposition of Isilon, which was all about hyperscale, unbelievable performance, efficiency, and most important of all, simplicity, to the classic IT use cases, which are around availability, reliability, data product, protection, disaster recovery, security, has, and that's what Mavericks does. Has the IT guys been caught off guard by that shift you just mentioned? Because that, that's happened for them pretty fast. You know, they've been buying storage, yep. you know, chugging along, you know, taking you know, inch by inch, yard by yard, you know, unlike the web scale companies. So now this big data problem that they have is upon yep. them. Um, what do the CIOs tell you when you have these conversations? Are they just buying gear? Are they re-architecting? Give us some insight and color around the environments. Yeah, you know, um, the CIO is in a real pinch today. So not only are all their traditional applications and workflows all of a sudden scaling orders of magnitude more than they were before, they're being asked to meet all these brand new demands around data analytics, cloud-based workflows, um, mobility, and here's the real challenge. Their budgets are hardly growing. So they're having shrinking to- Shrinking in many cases. Yeah, in yeah. many cases, that's right, Dave, they're shrinking. And so the name of the game is transformation. The only way you can do more with less is by transforming the way you do business. Transforming the tools that you use, and Isilon's all about that, and then most importantly, Picking a vendor that understands this transformation is going on and is in the business of helping customers through it. And I think EMC has absolutely demonstrated that we understand this and we're here to help our customers. Talk about the balancing act that the, um, now let's pop down to below the CIO, guys in the trenches doing actually the work, laying out the architectures, you know, architectural fidelity on one hand, you got this new modern infrastructure they got to manage in the other. In the old days it was scale up commercial software, and you know, scale out open source has kind of shifted that on extreme extremes. So obviously Google on one end, and then you got the enterprise hardcore on the other. Talk about the balancing act between scale out, scale out versus scale up, and the role of software plays in that. Well, you know, e EMC is clearly a best of breed product technology company. So, and what I mean by that is, you know, we've consciously chosen not to make a one size fits all product and then tell our customer that no matter what your challenge is, you know, there's one solution for it. You know, and I think what you've seen at the conference here over the last couple of days is that we've made huge investments in going out and either organically developing products or going out to the marketplace and acquiring the best tools for the job. And so, there, yes, there's a place for scale up. In fact, it's alive and well, and that business is doing really well for us. There's also a place for scale out. There's They're also, not mutually exclusive. Not, not at all. And look, you know, there's a little overlap over some of our EMC products, but we, I'll tell you, given the choice between having product gaps and product overlap, I think we, yeah, we would much, we'd much happier with overlap. Um, but there's a place for every one of these products, and our, our commitment to the customer is to have the right tool for the right job, and then give them a common experience around management, giving them a common experience around um, the commercial relationship with, that we have with them, and then most importantly, giving them a common experience around the service experience they have. It's really one throat to choke when it comes to EMC. How has the flash impact affected you guys? Obviously, it's in the industry, we've seen that a lot in the industry, but now with EMC having their own flash initiative, can you just share color on what's going on internally around Isilon and the flash group? Is there interplay there? Is there uh, overlap, or what's, what's the... What's the yeah, well, I mean, you know, so first of all, the, the world of Flash is, is changing the industry. And Isilon now, for I think the last four or five years now, we have incorporated Flash into our products. And I think about 40% of the, of the storage nodes that we sell today go out with some amount of SSD. And in some cases, they're 100% SSD. Now what we see around the rest of EMC is obviously a huge initiative for purpose-built flash arrays, both on the storage side and on the server side. And I'm really pleased to see that we're investing in the technology. Um, as I said earlier, there's a, this is a best of breed 
play here, and it's always the right tool for the job. There is a whole set of applications and workflows, and many of them next generation that are being built assuming a flash-only storage layer. And Extreme will do great, Extreme IO, our, our, yeah. our storage product there, they'll do great in, the, in that world. And then what remains to be seen, and there's a lot of work being done on the in the lab today on this, is you know, what can we do together? How can we string all flash arrays with Isilon solutions and some of our products yeah, all to together to provide an integrated solution to customers? Because you know, that's what customers really want. And as I was saying before, it seems like Isilon <laughs> is a fundamental component of EMC's old software-defined storage strategy. Talk about that for just from a business standpoint. Um, you know, what does that mean? You know, why Isilon and how did that come about? Well, you know, if you had gone back three years ago, EMC you know, really did have a little bit of a hole in its portfolio around scale out NAS. And if you think about didn't this. didn't have one. <laughs> okay, you said <laughs> it, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think about what's happened in the industry, you know, if you had gone back just to the end of the last decade, I mean, scale out NAS was still in its early stages. And just in the last three years, it's gone completely mainstream. Right? Now customers have adopted our products for all of the classic value propositions around scale, performance, ease of use, <laughs> that's, simplicity. That simplicity was key. And, right? and, and you know, the reception's been great. Yeah. But something else is happening now, and as part of, part of having kind of a best of breed product portfolio, customers are saying, look, I've got a lot of these different storage products, help me automate more, because the burden on storage administrators and CIOs today is still having to find the right products and then aligning them to specific workloads. Workloads change over time in unpredictable ways, and then figuring out how to re-architect storage architectures un underneath, even if you are using best of breed products, becomes really difficult. And I think that in part, that's what our Viper release this week was all about. It's being able to give customers a brand new level of automation to help them manage a bunch of heterogeneous storage solutions in a, an efficient and simplistic way. Yeah, and it, you know, in, in hearing, you know, getting brief, for instance, from Isilon prior to the acquisition from EMC, you would see, you know, you guys did very well in, specifically in, in certain industry segments. Um, and it seems like, you know, obviously the growth is you know, enormous. You guys are, whatever, whatever, a couple hundred million at acquisition, and now you're on a billion dollar run rate. Um, and you're seeing new use cases, right? just, uh, as you yep. just mentioned. Um, I was talking to a customer the other day, talking about it was in an Oracle environment, talking about a data protection use case, and, and other industries we're now seeing it evolve into, you know, this whole software-defined space. So it seems like it's a very versatile platform, uh, and it seems like you hit it right. That while you have competition, like you said, the One FS and this the global namespace piece really exploded, you guys. Um, so, from your perspective, where do you see this going? What's the potential? You guys are always looking at you know, the total market, you're always trying to grow faster than the market, clearly you're doing that. How far can you take this thing? Well look, we feel like we're just getting started. You know, we, we went to market in our early days in a very fo focused way around a few discrete verticals, mm. and really we went to where the data was. That's where the big data was back then. And today we've seen big data proliferate across all industries, all vertical markets, and any enterprise, even at the SMB level, right? And so, you know, the organizations that are buying our products are just attracted to, you know, the incredible ease of use and the ability to scale. Um, what happens is we start at customers in a very discrete opportunity. It might be home directories, it might be just general archives, something that's you know, very large and, and, and they want to get out of the business of having to deal with a complex infrastructure underneath to manage the data. And they purchase Isilon. But then something special happens. The users around the organization see how the, pro sees how the products perform and they start advocating that their own workflows be put on Isilon. And that's how, you know, we end up with many of the use cases that you just talked about. It happens organically within our customers. They find it, they try it, they like it, they buy more. So, how are you spending your time these days, Bill? I mean, what are you focusing on and what are your sort of personal you know, goals for the division? Well, we've, it's a very exciting time for us, right? You know, the, we really believe that the world of big data and the, and the world of enterprise IT have collided. Mm. And we're out there with our 1FS 7.0 release as the product to help solve that problem. But at the same time, there's a brand new set of demands that are just over the horizon. And in fact, for some customers, they're right on their doorstep today. 
And that's all around mobility, it's around data analytics, and it's around cloud. And so personally, I'm spending a lot of time with my organization thinking about how that transformation is going to manifest itself. You see, this is what Isilon's heritage is all about. You know, we did it very early on in the world of just raw big data. We just did it again in, the, in this world of big data meets enterprise IT. And we know that we have the capability of doing this again in this brand new world that's that we're just on the dawn of. And so I'm spending a lot of time with my organization and it's a lot of fun doing this, talking about how we can help our customers make this very next transformation. And as I said, this one's going to be harder than the last couple ones. This one is, is we're going to have to pull this off with, it, while, while we're going to help have to pull this off while helping our customers not just spend more money, but save money. Mm. And that's different than before. Excellent. All right, Bill, listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was really a pleasure having you awesome. on. Dave, what a pleasure yeah, being Dave. here. I really appreciate everything you're doing. <laughs> okay, Bill, John. thanks. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with this spotlight on Isilon, kicking, kicking some butt here at EMC World, amazing track record, inventing the future. Uh, like, they'd love to hear about those problems, we'll talk more about that. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>